Uh, don't know if I can do this for a long road trip, but for a shorter one, no, nah, it's not that bad. I'm, I'm okay. Oh dear God. All right. I love how she waits to tell me these things when we're like on camera. Somebody get the jaws of life. Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Chris here and look who we found. We found Michelle. Hi everybody, what's up? So we've had the Tesla Model Y for about a week now. So we figure let's talk about the things we like and don't like about it and give you guys a full tour of the car. Make sure to stay to the end of the video too guys because we got an exciting giveaway coming up and we're gonna give you the details about when it's coming. So what do you think? Let's go. Let's go and talk about the car. So let's give you a quick tour of the car. So first up is the front. All right guys, now let's go check out the back. So we currently have it in the configuration that we use every single day, which is the third row seats up. The way that we kind of have things is our youngest Mason sits in this seat in the second row right behind the driver. Our oldest, uh, Tyler, who's 12, sits in the other one next to the, or behind the passenger in the second row. And then our middle guy, Brandon, he's nine. He sits back here. He has the whole third row to himself. The third row is truly awesome. It has headrests that pop up here. So all you have to do is pop them up if you want the headrest action. He doesn't need it. He shorter so he keeps them down and then to put them down all you do is this button right here you push it in boom it goes right down boom goes right down and now all of a sudden you basically have a five seater so you'll see over here for the third row too uh they built in some armrests here so if you are sitting in the third row you have that nice option of being able to rest your arm over there you have the same uh, empty cavities over here for storage, one on each side, passenger side, and then we keep a little to some toys in there, kind of tucked away uh, in case we're at a park or something like that. So normally you pull this up, right? And you have the sub trunk underneath, just like you do in the five seater. No difference there, huge amount of space in that sub trunk. But the nice thing about the shelf in the seven seater is you have the option of going this way, right? Where it kind of goes flat and then it has a little bit of a lip here as it comes up to meet the back of the seats. So that's one way you can do it. They made this shelf reversible though. So you can quickly grab it if you want, flip it over. And if you go at it this way, all of a sudden it's now completely flush. So you can go one way or the other. You also have the buttons over here too. Same thing as with a five seater, you have the two buttons here that power control that second row and how that second row goes down. Now we have a booster seat in the one, so the one's not gonna go down flat, but the other one will. But all you do is you lift the button, obviously that stops because of the booster seat, and there you go, it goes down automatically. Now, I mean, if we were to take the booster seat out, you have even more space. Then, then to pull these seats up, it's really easy. You just reach in, you grab it, you pull it back just like any other third row. And boom, your third row is ready to go. It also has two cup holders there, which is really nice. And then it has USB-C chargers right there. These second row seats, they slide up and back. There's a lever underneath the seat. Now this is a feature that's unique to the Model Y seven seater. The five seater, these seats are stationary. They don't slide up and back, they're stuck where they are. The seven seater has the, the second row on the sliding tracks, so that way people can get in and out. So you just grab that lever, boom, slides all the way up, and then slides all the way back. Now the chair that sits behind the driver is attached to that seat plus the middle. So this all moves as one giant chunk. The passenger second row behind the passenger seat, that moves as a smaller little seat. So keep that in mind as you're going ahead and you're trying to set up your configuration with car seats and booster seats and things like that. Whoever you put behind the driver, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to move this seat up and back because it's so much bigger, it weighs a little bit more. This Center backing right here, this folds down, 
into a nice little armrest with some cup holders here for the people sitting in the second row. You also have two USB-C chargers here right underneath the air conditioning vents. So as you can see, there's lots of space. I mean, I am, I'm not a little dude. I'm 5'9", I'm a bigger guy, I'm built bigger. So, and I fit in this second row with no problem at all. Uh, even if I move this all the way up, that's as far as it goes. I can still sit really comfortably. I mean, I'm even slouching back a little bit to the point where I'm comfortable and I've got no issues. The other nice thing is, just like in the Model uh, the Model Y five-seater, this second row, it also reclines. So if you don't have anybody back there and these people want to be able to recline, all you do is you grab the handle underneath, lift it up, and boom, now I can recline back. Both of these chairs both recline. So you have all the same benefits that you do in the five seater, but you have a few extra ones with the seven seat configuration. Now we did have somebody comment on our last video. They were asking about handles inside the vehicle and how that works for when you make turns and stuff like that. There are no handles up here like you normally have in a vehicle. We have those grab handles up here. That doesn't exist. All it is is a light and then you have the little hanger hook to be able to go ahead and hang like a dress shirt or a jacket or something like that up on there. So there's no handle up here. The handles exist right here. So these are the handles in order to be able to like, you know, if somebody wants to hold on for a turn or something like that, they're just grabbing onto this, the door handle that's right here. This view guys, when you're sitting back here, this view is just, it's unbelievable. This glass up here is already tinted from the factory, so you don't have to worry about whether or not it's gonna bake you in the sun. It already has some excellent tint on there as well to reduce the UV rays that are coming through. So as far as whether or not an adult can fit in the very back in the third row, I'm gonna go ahead and get back there. Now, again, I'm not a little dude, all right? That, let's make sure we're clear on that. I'm 5'9", I'm built a little bit bigger, so let's see how easy this is for me. I, I haven't gone back there yet, so this, this is a first for this. We'll, we'll see. Whoa. I fit. Um, I, I feel a little squished, I'm not gonna lie. Let me go ahead and put this seat back. I actually have a decent amount of room. My knees are kind of touching the seat in front here. As you guys can see, there, there's not a lot of space here. My feet are chilling underneath the seat um, and my knees are kind of up against. I could definitely do this for like a short trip. I don't know if I could do this all the time. Definitely couldn't do this all the time. Uh, don't know if I could do this for a long road trip, but for a shorter one, nah, it's not that bad. I'm, I'm okay. Let's see what happens when we close the trunk though. Oh dear God. All right. So, yeah. You know, I can see what people talk about with this. I mean, especially wearing a hat, I, I can feel my hat is up against there. And especially like the button of my hat, yeah, it it's kind of pressed up. I, I definitely feel like I could sit back here for like a 30 to 45 minute drive if I had to. Especially if I'm the only one back here, it's super easy. If I was crammed back here with another person, if it was a kid, probably be okay another adult yeah that, that that's just not gonna happen it's just it's not but i could definitely make it work i do wonder what it would be like driving so let's go ahead and let's take a test our neighborhood has the worst streets on the planet right now our uh, water company is in the process of ripping up all the pipes in our neighborhood and our street is a giant pothole and bump disaster so uh let's go ahead and let's take a look at how this is going to be while we're driving on some bumps and see whether or not uh you know how how dangerous this is as an adult good luck through our neighborhood here we go go ahead and pull out the view is definitely pretty cool on the roof there's, there's no question about that uh, so far i'm okay I, I haven't felt anything back here i mean there's been a couple bumps all right now she's just hitting the gas to you know do whatever but i'm still okay i'm not i'm not hitting it's close though i mean there's no there's no doubt every time i kind of go back i feel my hair brush against the the glass back there no we're, we're still good i mean look my neighborhood is awful and she is making sure to hit every single bump that she possibly can up there and we're, we're still doing good i haven't hit my head on the glass like i said i can feel it um you know if we hit a giant pothole or went off a curb or something and you you know something really jolting then yeah i can see that you'd probably hit at that point this bar right here like in front of my face this uh 
this definitely makes you feel a little concerned. If all of a sudden she had to slam on the brakes, I have a feeling I would definitely hit my forehead on this. Now the fun part is gonna be how in God's name do I get out of this thing? This, this is just not gonna be, I feel like I'm Tommy Boy right now. That guy in a little coat. How, how in the world? Somebody get the jaws of life. Oh, all right. Clearly, big dudes and the third row don't mix all that well. It works, but the in and out, it's a little rough. Again, for kids, this third row is totally doable. All right, guys, so we threw a booster seat in the third row here to show you guys the uh, versatility back here. So we got the booster seat right here. Mace, how about you hop in? We're gonna show you what it looks like with uh, a full load back here. So Mason's in the booster seat. Mace, how about we do the, the bu buckle your seat here? Make sure that you can still buckle. Get back there. Yep, no problem. No problem buckling that in. P, why don't you hop in there too into your seat? So we've got Mason who's five, we got Brandon who's nine. 10. Nope, oh, yep, sorry, 10. So how do you feel about the third row? You're the one that sits back here all the time. Um, it's pretty comfy. Yeah? Do yeah. you have? And I, and I get my own cord to myself. That's the nice thing. You don't have to fight for charger space? Yep. Nice. Do you ever feel cramped back here? Or do you feel pretty comfortable? I feel pretty comfortable. And what's the benefit of this third row versus the Traverse? What's oh, different? Um, yeah, the third row in Tesla, you can actually um, heat the seats back here. With uh, the latest app update, uh, it now gives you the option to turn on heated seats in the third row. You can only do it on the app though. You can't actually do it on the screen inside the Tesla. Not quite sure why, I'm assuming that's coming soon, but for right now, it is only via the app. It's asking about the third and second row and the options that you have with booster seats and or car seats. So I just wanted to kind of answer that question for you guys real quick here. As you can see, a booster seat in the third row is no problem, we just showed you guys that. There are no latches back here. So normally you have the safety latches that go in between the seat and the backer. In the third row, there are no safety latches back there. You do have the safety latch right here, and that's exactly what that's for, for a car seat. So if you have a car seat, you're not gonna be able to do the seat latch that goes down here, but you will be able to do the shoulder strap that goes around the back and you can clip it in that way. And then you can also throw the tether that goes around here that latches back onto here to keep it stabilized. In the second row, you can see you still have this same safety latch. So if you wanted to go up and over with the tether, you can, that's still an option for you in the second row. It is available on all three seats. In the second row, you do have the safety latches here. As you can see, they give you the little symbol there letting you know, and you can feel it. It's right here, I don't know if you can see it, but you can feel it's right there. All right, so Michelle, you've been the one that's been driving this pretty much every day. What, what's, your, what's your first impressions of how you're liking the car so far? I'm surprised at even how much more that I liked it than what I thought I was gonna like it. I've always ridden as a passenger. I've been a passenger here, I've been a passenger in the back, and I thought it was awesome, but driving it has just given me a whole new perspective on how amazing this vehicle really is. What do you like the most about the car since you've been driving it? What's like your, your if you had to pick one thing, what's been your favorite feature? My favorite feature is the one that I thought I would hate the most, and that's the auto drive. So it is amazing how accurate it is, how it keeps you in the lane, it stops when it needs to stop. On the, gosh, maybe second or third day that we had the car, we had a baseball tournament in about 45 minutes from us and we had to take the Pennsylvania Turnpike. So I gave it a whirl. We went through a construction zone and even through the construction zone, that car stayed within the lanes um, the entire time. It It is in the middle of the lanes, not to the left, not to the right. It shows you on the bumpers. So the feature that I thought I'd be afraid of the most is now the one that I would probably say is my favorite. Do you miss the Traverse at all? It's a tough question because if the Traverse was electric, I think I would probably love my Traverse um, just because I really, I've been used to it, I'm a lot more used to it, but overall I can say that this is truly an amazing car that is my favorite right now. This is so peppy that it doesn't matter who I'm next to, I'm able to zoom and get in front of somebody if I need to. It, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? It is a lot of fun. <laughs> I bet you thought you'd never enjoy the peppiness of it. 
as much as you. I did not because I've always, I started with an SUV um, when I was 16 and I really do like being up high, but this, the way that it sits, it doesn't feel too low and it's got really nice pickup. What aren't you liking about the car? So the one major thing that I do miss about the Traverse actually now that I'm thinking about it is Apple CarPlay. I loved my Apple CarPlay in the Traverse. My phone hooked right up, Waze was on the screen. Google Maps is great, don't get me wrong, but there are Waze and the benefits of using Waze I do miss that. But we're gonna take a look and review an app that came out with that's supposed to let you mirror your Apple uh, iOS or Android phone up onto the screen to kind of simulate Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Uh, in fact, we even have a few copies to give away. So we have a giveaway coming up. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that one. Anything else that you found that you wish uh, the Tesla had or anything so else? So the only other downfall is the charging capability that's here for your phone. Some iPhones work and my understanding is that because these are the larger iPhones, iPhones um, and where the charging is it does not actually charge here so it's nice because I always know where my phone is but the charging capability doesn't work this is a problem that's specific for the Apple iPhone 12 Pro Max um, the issue is when Apple did the iPhone uh, 12 Pro Max the magnet charging that they put in the back they they raised it up from where the normal QI charger lies in any other normal phone that's out there. So because of that, it misses the mark on a lot of third-party QI chargers that are out there because it doesn't align properly. So there is one thing that I've noticed in driving it. If the third row is folded down because you're using all the space that's back there, in order to get that third row up, there's no like lanyard or, or tether or something hanging from the back of it that normally in like a normal car, you could just grab that tether and then you pull back and the third row pops right back up. It's pretty easy. They they neglected to put something like that in, in the Tesla. So you literally have to like reach all the way in. You have to grab the very top of the the, the, the back of the chair and then you have to pull it up. So any anything else that you can give us? I think we've had a lot of fun. Um, one of his least favorites, one of mine and the kids' favorites is karaoke. Oh. So, so that we'll look forward to for Hershey because we'll have a lot of fun with karaoke. Oh. The other thing that we like to do when we pick the kids up, we were some, um, we picked up another little guy and we used the toy box. Um, yeah, so under toy box, um, they were, it's called emissions. So on the screen, if you hit the arrow and then go to toy box, you have all these different options. So uh, we like to do the boom box, which is La Cucaracha oh, yeah. um, when you play the horn under emissions the kids like to move this around and talk about who's doing what and it changes the sound but then you can also put it on demand so if you turn this screen off and I'm the driver I can do it from anywhere in the car and the kids get a kick out of that especially when new people are in the car and then people kind of look at who's making that noise <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have three boys Farts are always funny that just never, they're, they're always funny. One thing to note, uh, if you're doing something similar, right? If you have kids and you're going through car line for quick pickups and things like that, in order for the doors to be able to open for the kids to get in, you have to put the car in park. So um, that's something like normally in the Traverse when I go pick them up, I just pull right up and I hit the unlock button and boom, they jump in. Here, you actually have to pull up, you throw the car in park real quick, that'll unlock the doors so they can get in and then you can move along. We've gone out as a family a lot in the week that we've had it and we We've, we've crammed everybody in and we seem to have it kind of down to a system now, don't you think? Absolutely. Well, a lot of what people have commented in our last video is people are concerned about the functionality as to, you know, the third row and being able to truly fit, um, you know, a family of five or a family of six in here with three or four kids. So after using it for a week, what are your thoughts on that for those people? I. I don't see why that's a problem. Yesterday, I just actually took, I filled the entire car with boys. Um, so I took a bunch of them to go play football at the nearby park and we had every seat filled. We had some extra stuff in the trunk that they brought along and we all fit just fine. Um, on Easter Sunday, we're heading out to Hershey Park. We're going there for a day trip. We're gonna vlog that for you guys. Uh, fully expect it to be perfectly okay though. I really do. Well, we're bringing an extra adult, so we're gonna be loaded in. We are. I love how she waits to tell me these things when we're like on camera. So who's the extra adult? My mom. So I Oh, she's coming along. All right, so we're gonna he have- No, didn't know my mom was coming. He just probably thought they were driving on their own. So, hey, even better test for everybody. We're gonna put six people in, three adults, three kids. We'll see how this goes for like an hour and a half, hour, 45 minute car ride. This is great. Yeah. Brandon and Tyler in the third row. I'm happy.
happy. So now for people that are only a family of four and they're on the fence between the five seater and the seven seater, what's your recommendation on that? As soon as the kids get older and they wanna do things with other people, even if you only have two kids, I would recommend the third row because it's so easy to just pull it up or put it down. And so when you are on a family vacation, you have the extra storage. But when your kids get older and wanna bring a friend, you have that row ready to go. The only thing you're missing between the five and the seven is that tiny little bit of sub uh, sub trunk space that sits under that second row where it would normally be a third row if you got the seven seater. And that space is so small, literally the only thing that typically fits down there is the charging cable itself. And then you can probably throw like a briefcase under there and that's about it. So it gives you a lot more flexibility, I feel like, to have that option. And for $3,000, you're only losing out on a tiny little bit of space, but you're gaining a whole lot of functionality. Cool, well, do you have anything else you wanna share with the fine people of YouTube? No, get a Tesla, they're amazing. Oh my God, they are. Thanks always for watching guys. Make sure to chuck a like on this video if you have found any of this information helpful. We really, really appreciate it. It really does help. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. That way you don't miss any of the fun videos we have coming out, like uh, taking six people to Hershey Park, which I'm, you know, is brand new news. And as always, if you are in the market to buy your own Tesla and you want 1000 free supercharger miles, feel free to use our referral link code. It is in the description below. Thanks as always guys, and we will see you real soon in another one.